Hello, today I would like to show you this absolutely beautiful compact computer. It was made by a company called Shuttle. It is a very well known brand and they are manufacturing them from many years. The oldest one that I've got with exactly the same form factor was completely silver and it have got like a CPU with a 600 megahertz clock so it was extremely old this one is much newer but from current time it is a obsolete device i would assume that this device was made around 2005 that's because of the io port that you can see here you've got a panel that after pressing should be locked but here we've got a broken plastic clip and we've got a input output for our audio interface so as you can see that's telling us it is quite old because we've got a separated microphone and the headphones we've got a two usb ports i would assume they are going to be a version 2.0 and we've got a fire wire and that was a big thing because you can grab your camcorder plug it here and download your footage that was a primary reason to have got a firewire port at the front here we've got our panel with a power switch and the reset we've got also activity for hard disk drive and power under that panel we should get a floppy disk drive but i do not have it installed but in the back you can see a ssd hard disk drive that i put into this machine it is a 60 gigabyte and that's make a perfect sense for a windows xp upper bay is a little bit more interesting because we've got a button but as you can see it's not doing anything and that's because that button is using arm and that arm is touching a switch on the dvd drive and it will make tray to open the opening tray will push that flap and you will have your place to put a cd after closing it back it will close back and hide your drive so this is absolutely beautiful especially if you've got like a different color than black so you've got your computer absolutely beautiful i've got feeling this is not a generic flex power supply that you can find on a nas system or in the one u servers it looks a little bit smaller to me but maybe i'm not correct if you know which kind of size it is then please let me know we've got the regular atx plug plus the four pin Pentium 4 plug that how it was called we've got a regular Molex output with the slots for a floppy disk drive and we've got a regular serial port hardware serial port absolutely beautiful for programming vintage radios this is quite interesting and honestly I never seen it before because from the pictogram and color I would assume this is optical input so maybe it will allow you to record an optical signal via the TOS link absolutely very interesting here is clearly output and this is what you can commonly find so I never in my entire life never seen a dedicated input for recording so yeah you can tell me if this is a common thing then we've got a six pin fire wire with a power absolutely beautiful then we've got a ps2 for keyboard and mouse we've got the ethernet and additional usb ports here we've got couple output for our surround system i would assume that is going to take care of 5.1 that port with the RCA 
I don't know what it does. I would assume that is something with uh, audio, but I'm not sure. Maybe this is a line out. You can tell me. And here is the absolutely most critical part which make this computer great. As you can see, we've got a graphics card. And yes, it does accept like a regular full size graphic card. In our case, this is a AGP. So that was absolutely beautiful. And just imagine that you stuck into that small box a full size card and you can play your latest game. So that was absolutely beautiful. Here we've got the IDE interface and that most likely is going to be a floppy disk drive, but I do not see all the pins. In the back we can see a RTC battery and this is what I replaced to make the device not lose configuration. Let's rotate it. So here we've got the power supply. This is what we've seen already. And we've got our memory modules in uh, two slots. Actually, that was a IDE port. This is the floppy disk drive. This is what I told you that I cannot see the all pins. So this is the shorter one and that's going to be your floppy. As you can see, all those capacitors are not bulged, so they were definitely a high quality. We've got a very nice cable management. As you can see, everything is in a correct spot. Then we take a look at the top. And if you take a look inside, we've got our CPU. And you might have got feeling that it is a passive cooling because there is no fan on the CPU, there is no heat sink, but we've got those heat pipes and those heat pipes go into that block. And here is your massive heat sink for the CPU. You can clearly see the heat pipes between all those fins and it's cooling like I believe a Athlon 3. I believe this is the CPU that is being installed. We've got uh, two SATA ports. I swapped the DVD for a SATA recorder and there was a IDE port. And if you take a look inside, we've got something absolutely beautiful. You've got a PCI slot. And yes, you've got a room to put your custom PCI card. Just imagine that you would like to swap the CD drive for like a LTO. Then you can use your PCI slot and you can put a regular card over here. So as you can see, you can have a dedicated graphics card, additional full-size PCI card and everything in that extremely compact form factor. And let's take a look at the bag. This is how it presents. We've got a fit and here is the model number just if you'd like to google the specification. You most likely going to ask yourself what's the reason for having a device like this on your desk and I can tell you right now that those devices were not popular at your desk. This is not a workstation. They were very popular at a media center. So you've got them as a home entertainment system. So you can play movies out of it or you can use a emulator software to play like a console, console games. So that was the main reason and this is why they were designed to be a quite nice visually pleasing because they were sitting next to your VCR. For me, I'm going to be using it for programming retro two-way radios in cases that I need a 32-bit 
Windows XP and this is the device that I will go for. So let's just try to plug it in. Let me put a top shell because it looks absolutely beautiful if you add the cover. And just take a look how small it is. It is size of like a QNAP NAS server and it is a full-fledged computer with a dedicated graphic card. Here we've got opportunity to hook it up to absolutely minimal I.O. setup. First we are going to grab the VGI cable and I'm going to plug it in. Of course the plug was reverse. Then we've got our DIN to a PS2. This is our keyboard. Then I'm going to grab the power cable. And on top of that we are going to be grabbing a mouse and hook it up to the back USB port. So we are ready to try it out. Let's take a look at the CPU. And we've got the AMD Athlon 64-bit. This is model a 3200 plus, 2 gigahertz, 1 gigabyte of RAM. And as you can see, it's working absolutely beautiful, very responsive. And we can like open game. And yes, as you can see, it's working absolutely beautiful for that. Let me try to open it. Those two. And how to push the... Well, okay, here we've got the spring and the ball is going. We've got the left and right. I've got no idea what I'm doing, but I know the ball should no, not drop in the between. But yeah, looks very responsive, but you definitely expect that from having a full size. AGP graphics card. So this is how it looks like. Full size computer squeezed into a tiny form factor. Dedicated graphic card, free slot for a PCI accessory card and everything in that compact form factor. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that interesting. See you next time and bye bye.